Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about the May Melee Tournament, both the NA and APAC tournaments. Talk about them both in one video, uh, so I'll try to keep them both relatively brief um, so I don't go too long, but there was a lot of really crazy matches this weekend. This tournament was incredible, and I just want to just put up one thing and one thing, and that is that this tournament needs to uh, return. We already know it is returning. I hope we get it every month um, from here until the rest of the season. I thought it was a really good tournament. I think it was a very, very, very good format, and I really enjoyed it. I can't wait until teams start to be able to play together again in one region because that will be really, really good. So I'm excited and hopeful that we get to see stuff like that more often. Uh, so with that out of the way, let's, uh, let's, let's jump into this. So let's start with the APAC tournament uh, and what happened over there. Now, if you remember my predictions, I picked the Hangzhou Spark to make it all the way under the assumption that Architect would be playing. The Architect was not able to play yet. So that was uh, that was that was that. Uh, so the Soul Dynasty able, were able to beat the Spark pretty easily. They had a pretty close series against the Guangzhou Charge, but the Soul Dynasty did make the finals, which didn't really surprise me. They were probably my second choice. Um, I wasn't crazy about the Guangzhou Charge. Uh, I thought the Dynasty were a better team overall. I thought their performance had, had been better so far. So I uh, th they're the team that I I would have picked after the Spark. Um, if I had known Architect wasn't going to play, which I probably should have assumed he wasn't going to play, actually. I probably would have picked the Dynasty, but here we are. Uh, the Dynasty looks very good. The big surprise was the quarterfinals matches for the Chengdu Hunters New York Excelsior match and the London Spitfire Shanghai Dragons match because um, it, was, it was very possible that Shanghai could have lost to London and New York could have lost to Chengdu. Neither of those two teams performed very well. Uh, Chengdu and London looked very good. Um, it was a really, really, really crazy set of matches, but ultimately, New York and Shanghai were able to both win, both move on. Um, Shanghai, though, very dominant against New York, setting up the rematch between the Seoul Dynasty and the Shanghai Dragons for the finals, and oh boy, it was a good one. Went the distance, went to seven maps with the Shanghai Dragons in the end, pulling out the win with a reverse sweep a four map reverse sweep led by none other than fearless and there's this there, there's something so poetic about this because fearless is the player who you know he, he's really the only he's the only real player on this roster this the shanghai dragons roster who's been there uh from the 0 and 40 season right yes gaggery is still on the roster yes dia is still on the roster but they're not playing matches right they they, they don't they don't put them out in any matches that's not really just the what they want for them that's not what they they use them for at this point in time but fearless was on that 0 40 roster spent a year in contenders and then was brought back up and there was a huge question mark i think around fearless and stand one no neither of them really looked that much better than the other there was always this kind of question of well who's really their starting main tank like they're pretty interchangeable and I, fearless didn't play the first three maps of the series Stan 1 played all the first three maps. They brought in Fearless, and the series changed. Fearless is in... I mean, he looked amazing. And to me, this may be a bit of a hot take, but to me, this match for Fearless was his MVP moment. There's There was kind of a an obvious MVP candidate in North America, and there still is, right? Um, we'll talk about the, the tournament in NA when we get there, but... Carpe is, is like the obvious MVP candidate for North America. Uh, or at least he is a player who is on a really good team and is obviously their MVP candidate. He's been playing really, really well. He is essentially, like, if Carpe plays well, the, the, the Fusion play well, right? That's essentially what you have over there. But in, in, in Asia, there wasn't really that player, right? Even with Shanghai, there was no one player who I looked at and said, well, he's the reason why they're super successful, right? Lip has had a really good season, but he's also been, he, he's had some, some, some really bad games and some really bad moments. So that is something to, 
look at. But I think Fearless, his performance in this series, to me, is the MVP moment for him. We're talking about a player who changed everything for this team. He was incredible. He was absolutely insane in the four maps that he played. He is arguably the best Winston in the league. He's arguably right now a top main tank in the league. Um, and, you know, there's a two-week break after this tournament now, and I'm really interested to see what happens with this Shanghai Dragons team after this break. What do they do? How do they kind of improve upon what they already have as a very, very, very good team? Uh, I'm really interested to see it, but Fearless to me is is the player of the weekend, and, and you can't even... No one, is, no one else even comes close. What what Fearless has been able to do this season is incredible and amazing. And I don't think you can even... You, you can't understate or overstate, I guess. I don't really know. You, you can't look at his performance and not just be incredibly happy for him. I mean, he was in contenders for a year. And he's brought back up and he is, I think the backbone right now of the Shanghai Dragons roster. And I think that when you talk about potential MVP candidates, I think you have to mention Fearless now because that performance really solidified him as this team's main tank, and I think he is going to be the guy going forward for this team. I've been spending a lot of time talking about the Shanghai Dragons. I do want to give praise to the Soul Dynasty. They pushed the Dragons to the brink. They had them on uh, this close. To, to beating the Shanghai Dragons, this whole dynasty were. Even on Junkertown, they had a really, really, really good map on Junkertown, the, the seventh map of the series. But ultimately, the Soul Dynasty's biggest problem was a lack of flexibility in DPS. Prophet can play a lot of heroes. He can't play a lot of the heroes that he needs to be able to play right now. He can't play the, the Echo very well. He looked better on it as the tournament progressed, and there's, there's a two-week break. He, he should be able to come back and look a lot better. But it was a very good performance, I thought, from the Soul Dynasty as a whole. They weren't able to pull it out in the end, but I think that they have really cemented their spot, even though they have been inconsistent this season. I think they look like a really good team, and I think that they have cemented their spot as the second-best team in the Asia region. They have some issues that they need to work out. They have some players who I think they should, uh, or some positions they should probably try to improve, and they should definitely try to work on getting better in the flex DPS um, performances because Prophet's a very good player, did not look very good in the Echo, and I think it really uh, was a huge problem for them. Watch this series if you didn't watch it, the, the Shanghai Dragons vs. Dynasty series. It was a very good series, 100% worth watching, and I think that you should uh, see it if you didn't. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time talking about uh, the each, indiv each individual game and each individual team. I am planning on doing a power rankings here uh, in the next, you know, during this two-week break. So you'll get a, an Asia power ranking, you'll get an NA power ranking, and I'll be much more in-depth on each team and my opinions on them uh, at that time. But for now, I want to focus more uh, on just kind of the tournament broadly and what happened with the tournament as a whole, because I think that that's really what what is the, the main thing that people want to hear about, and the main thing I want to talk about is the finals for each of them and, and really kind of the big matches and the big upsets and uh, the teams that impressed me and whatnot. So let's move on from the Asia tournament to the North America tournament. Now, this bracket you're seeing does not include all of the uh, original set of like qualifier matches, um, but I can walk you through what happened. The Toronto Defiant squeaked past the Vancouver Titans in the... Uh, the true um why can't i think of the word that i literally just said qualification match then you had the paris eternal pick the boston uprising and that was a 3-2 win for the paris eternal very close series for them the atlanta rain picked the toronto defiant that was a 3-0 i believe the um la gladiators then picked the uh, Washington Justice, that was a 3-0 for them. And the Houston Outlaws were paired then with the Dallas Fuel, and the Dallas Fuel got the 3-1 victory there. 
And uh, the, the quarterfinals then, Shock picked the Fuel, Eternal were stuck uh, with the Valiant, the Mayhem picked the Rain, and the Fusion picked the Gladiators. Uh, the match that surprised me the most uh, was probably the Mayhem against the Rain. I, I thought the Rain looked better. Uh, I thought they played very well uh, going into the quarterfinals. The fact that the Mayhem were able to beat them as convincingly as they did was a huge surprise to me. I was also impressed by the Valiant. They thought I thought they played very well against the Eternal. I thought they um, were very impressive. I thought that they are a team who is certainly looking a lot better. Uh, and the fact that they made it to the semifinals is huge for them. This is a team who really benefits from getting that one additional win uh, that the tournament gives them. Um, it's a very, very, very difficult thing that the Valiant have had to do with a new roster, ton of rookie players, but they looked very, very good against the Eternal. Um, yeah, it was a 3-2, it was a six-map uh, game. The Eternal are a really good team, and the fact that the Valiant are able to, to beat them speaks a lot about how good this Valiant team really is, and they're a team who, in this two weeks, I expect to get a lot better. Uh, where I think the interesting team to look out for in this two weeks, of course, is the Paris Eternal. Uh, Sparkle will be able to play when the season kicks back off uh, June 13th, for, so they have that going for them. I don't know when XC is going to be back. I, I think he's still going to be a little bit. I think his injury got worse, actually, from what I was, was reading uh, on Twitter. So who knows when XC is going to be back. But Sparkle, I think, is going to be a huge boost for this team. And I think that that's something to really look out for with the Paris Eternal. But LA Valiant, give them credit where credit is due for their win. The biggest, biggest, biggest surprise for me personally came with the Florida Mayhem beating the Philadelphia Fusion. Now, what's interesting is that they listed the Mayhem Fusion match as a 3-2 um, on this, this image, as you can, as you can see. Um, the score uh, was 3-1. Or the Mayhem. It was not a 3-2. I don't know why they put 3-2. They put 3-1. Or they should have put 3-1. The Mayhem looked really, really good this weekend. They beat Atlanta convincingly. They beat Philadelphia convincingly. And they pushed San Francisco to the limit. Right? It says 4-2 uh, for the final score uh, between San Francisco and Florida. Uh, Florida almost won a map. Um, you know, it, they should have been up 3-2. Um, they, they, just, they, they, they just missed out. They made some mistakes. The Florida Mayhem didn't look perfect. There are a lot of things that I think you have to really look at with them and say, hey, uh, there's some some obvious areas with the Mayhem that I think were, were struggling. Uh, I thought that they had some issues with dealing with Violet on Baptiste. I thought Chris got picked out, uh, picked out a lot. He was the first pick in a lot of fights. And I also think that just the Baptiste play from the Mayhem wasn't able to even match up super well with what Violet was doing. And I thought their timings were off on some things. They were very hesitant uh, to push fights at times. But for a team that was the worst team in the league last season, to be able to beat the Atlanta Reign, the Philadelphia Fusion, the team with the best record in the Overwatch League, and then to go the distance with the defending champion, San Francisco Shock, it is a huge statement to how much better this Florida Mayhem team is. And I think you cannot, you can't look at this team anymore and be like, eh, you know, they're, you know, they're not that good. This is a, this is a legit team. They are one of the best teams in North America right now. And I think they are one to two additional players away from being a serious, serious, serious contender for uh, being a, a, a title team. Um, San Francisco is obviously the team to beat in North America. It is going to be very difficult for anyone to look at them and say they're not the team to beat in North America. They just won this tournament. That's a huge win for them. Um, I didn't think they would do it. I doubted them. I thought the, the Lee Fusion were the better team um, and the Shock were, were, were a really good team. But if I learned anything from this tournament, it is that there is no unbeatable Titan in this league. There isn't one. The Dragons looked mortal. 
multiple times. They looked mortal against the London Spitfire. They looked mortal against the Seoul Dynasty. The San Francisco Shock looked mortal against the Dallas Fuel at times, and they looked mortal against the Florida Mayhem. The Fusion obviously looked mortal. They lost the Florida Mayhem. So this tournament was really big for a lot of things, but that to me is the big thing. It cemented the fact that this isn't the 2019 season where there was just there were two teams who are far and away better than everybody else. Then you had New York, who was just kind of right behind them. And then, you know, everybody else in the league was kind of, you know, eh. This is a really big tournament to really set the stage for this 2020 season being incredible. There's going to be some really great matches coming up. And I think we're going to see some of these teams improve and get better and better and better as changes are made. I don't want to talk too much about each team because, as I said, I'm going to have a power rankings coming up. I wanted this video to be somewhat short, kind of brief recap about what happened, give you my thoughts. My brackets, pretty bad. Uh, they got busted pretty heavily. Um, the North America one was okay, but the Fusion loss obviously really put a wrench in that. Uh, but the Asia bracket was definitely the big surprise um, with how well a lot of these teams looked. And I think that you really look at the Asia bracket. There's no team in Asia that I look at, and I put them below like 15 in a power ranking, right? Like the worst teams in, in Asia, I think would mop the floor with some of these teams in North America. Even ones who I don't even think they would, even the other you know, teams I might be like, Oh, like, yeah, I think of London. I'm like, Oh, Atlanta would probably beat London, but uh, maybe they wouldn't. Maybe London would destroy Atlanta. We, we don't really know how good some of these teams are right now. Uh, I'd love to see more and I'd love to see what uh, happens when the season does kick back off. In, later in June but for now we'll have to wait there's gonna be a lot of contender stuff to watch and obviously like I said I will have some power rankings coming up in the next couple of weeks or next or over the next week or so I don't know exactly when I'll put them out uh, I'm thinking Friday and Monday but I'll see as we get closer to I to put them out that's it for this video. If you enjoyed, consider liking and subscribing. Let me know down below your thoughts on the tournament, what you thought was going to happen, if you were surprised, if you were impressed by anybody, if there was anybody you were disappointed in. Uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. But I'm going to get out of here. Thank you once again. Hope you're all staying safe, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.